What's going on guys? So today I'm at AnchorRoom.com and we're going to be showing you guys how to install the GT350 steering wheel on a Mustang with an automatic transmission. There are videos out there showing how to install the steering wheel itself, but I haven't seen any with uh, mention of the paddle shifter. So there is an extra step that you guys have to take if you have an automatic. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so here are the tools that um, are needed for the removal of the stock steering wheel and the installation of the GT350 steering wheel. Um, we're going to need a 10 millimeter socket for the removal of the um, negative battery cable to make sure that the um, airbag doesn't explode in our face when we're doing the installation and uh, removal. Um, we happen to use a Torx a bit for the removal of the airbag. Um, there's two spring clips that are accessible through access holes on the back side. This is the tool we're going to use for it. We can also use it later if we wanted to for the removal of the bezels that are in the steering wheel. This is a 24 millimeter um, socket that's used for the removal of the nut that holds the actual steering wheel to the column. Um, we chose to use a um, small impact but of course you can always use a standard ratchet. And then last but not least, um, again, we have the option of doing it manually, um, but in our case, we decided to use the Torx T20 bit inside of the um, impact to speed up um, the removal as well as the installation of the bezels. Um, but those are the all, only tools we're going to need. So again, to recap, 10 millimeter socket with a um, ratchet wrench. We have a 24 millimeter socket and a Torx T20 bit, and that's all it takes. All right, so the first thing we need to do is remove the three push pins from the top of the battery cover. Once they're removed, you can slide it up, and then you have access to the actual battery. Using a uh, 10 millimeter socket on a wrench, I would suggest removing, loosening the nut. Once it's loose, you can thread it all the way off. Pull the cable up and I would suggest taking that nut and putting it back on top of the stud so that you don't misplace it. Once it's back threaded on top of the stud just lay the cable on top of the plastic battery cover and then you can proceed to the next step. Okay so the next step in removal of the steering wheel is to remove the airbag. That's the entire reason why we disconnected the um, battery to begin with. We have a small tool, this happens to be our Torx bit at the same time, that we're going to slide into the access hole. And there's a couple spring clips in there which we will talk about in a bit. You simply press in and pop up the airbag. Sometimes it might take a little hunting to find the actual spring clip but you'll feel that resistance once you get it in there knowing that you're in the right place. There we go. Once the airbag is loose, be careful. Carefully flip it upside down and you'll find three connectors that will need, will need to be removed from the back of the airbag in order to get it away from the steering wheel. We'll start with this top one just pry back that little red piece and then there is a small tab which you will press down on and simply slide the wire away from the back side of the connector and then these I found that using something small like such it's easiest to pop these um, little orange tabs up and if you'll notice too they are color coded which will help um, here's this black one you'll notice that once I get it up that the actual bottom connector is also black and then on this yellow one that the bottom connector is yellow to find the uh, appropriate placement once those are loose we simply remove the airbag and, airbag and place it in a safe place until we need it for the next wheel removal of the steering wheel is fairly simple we're using a small um, impact with a 24 millimeter uh, socket, place it over top of the bolt, and she comes right out. Once she's loose, carefully slide the wheel back, 
There is a connector on the inside, if you can see that, that we'll need to take loose. And then we can slide the wheel right off. Just be real careful with these connectors. They stay in place. And all we have to do now is swap the bezels to the new steering wheel, swap the uh, paddle shifters, and we're going to reverse the process. Okay, next thing here is we're going to remove the actual bezels on the original steering wheel, including the paddle shifters, and get them swapped over to the new GT350 steering wheel. As you can tell, there is quite a few little Torx uh, screws. It's a T20, by the way. And um, we're going to try to remove these in a certain order and place them on our workbench so we don't get everything mixed up. We're going to start with the top. You notice it doesn't take much, but a tool does make it a little bit easier to get them off. And it certainly speeds up the process. So this is one side, for instance. I would suggest just sticking your finger under here and popping it up. And then we have another plug with a push pin. Press down and pull the wire out. And as I just mentioned, I'm putting these on a workbench in a certain order to try to keep them organized. Then we have that one that was actually not visible until we removed that bezel that will take that one out next. Be careful not to over torque these as they will break the plastic tabs. Once this one is out I found it's easier to flip it upside down and stick your finger in there on the tab to get it to slide loose. As you can tell again it has a push pin there but it can only go in one way so it's not rocket science once that side is loose I'm just going to move to the other side do the exact same thing trying to keep um, all of the screws on the workbench in a certain order again pop your finger underneath the bezel if you can get it under there, that is. And pop loose the tab again. Then again, putting the bezel in a certain place to keep it organized. Again, that one hidden piece there, that one screw. And I think this is the hidden one. It's really the one that you want to worry about making sure you do not over torque when you're installing it because it has a plastic tab that can easily break um, and I'm not sure if you notice but some of the other ones have a washer which prevent because they actually deadhead on top of metal but this one particular one that hidden one does not so if you over torque that then it can easily break that tab and you don't want to do that alright so again we have this piece loose just get your finger in there and push the tab down Sometimes a little bit more difficult if you have bigger fingers as you can tell. There we go. So that's now loose. Again placing it on the workbench to kind of keep everything in order to where it belongs. Now this is what's different on the paddle shifters as you can tell. We have a Torx there, an additional connector, and again on the right hand side we have a Torx bit, I mean a Torx screw there and an additional connector. I found it's probably easier to just go ahead and take the connectors off since it's stable. It's not moving all over the place. Again just push in that little tab and then pull out the wire and at that point once you loosen these torque screws the paddles pretty much just fall right out of place as you can tell and there they are um, again I would suggest since you're going to reuse them to take these out and you can just hold them in place you know where everything goes same thing with the other one and again as you notice since I did the wire in advance it made things a little bit easier and again we'll put that here in place so it keeps everything together. I have an additional bezel that I forgot to take off and it most certainly would help if I can get back there to push the plastic piece off. So, And on this piece it's the same thing. You want to take it all loose and put your finger under there and just kind of just pop it out of place. Let me keep those together over there. 
All right, and as you noticed by me taking that off, it made things a lot easier. I just popped that whole plastic piece back out. And as you notice that also, the plastic piece is what contains all the wiring. So you kind of got to remember where everything goes, but again, it's a lot, pretty much common sense. Um, you just don't want to pinch any wiring in the process. And I mentioned earlier when we were taking the airbag out, the spring clips, this is actually where that tool was inserted through the plastic piece. There's the actual access hole. And when you put the tool in there, you're hunting for this piece right here, which is that spring clip because once that's compressed like so, it allows the airbag to come out. So just kind of an inside look after the fact so you kind of know what you're looking for. All right, next thing we're going to do is get that GT350 wheel and reverse this entire process. So here is the um, GT350 steering wheel. As you can tell, there's a slight modification on there to go perfectly with Ali's white car. We made a uh, 12 o'clock centering strip just for that. Um, but again, as you notice with the GT350 steering wheel, it comes with the plastic um, piece, the plastic backing piece in place, um, and it does not have provisions for the paddle shifters. So we're going to swap out the actual backing from the steering wheel that came on the car to the GT350 steering wheel that we are placing into the vehicle. Um, again, it just takes a little work around. You can press from the inside out. Um, I would work your way around, but it goes fairly smoothly once you've got it going. Again, remember that these two pieces go in the center and the rest of it is fairly common sense where it goes. But we now have the GT350 steering wheel with the plastic bezel that we know no longer need. So we can get that out of the way. We're going to take, <coughs> excuse me, the plastic um, backing that came on the steering wheel from the factory and we're going to simply place it on the back of the steering wheel. Once we make sure that all the wires are kind of where we want them to be, you can reverse that whole process and pretty much snap the um, piece into place. You know, it just takes a little working around and making sure you get it all in the right spot. But you'll tell it's got kind of a firm snap when you get it into place. All right, we should be in good shape there. And then we're going to reverse that process that I spoke of earlier, and we're just going to put everything back in place. Um, I will literally reverse it the exact same way that it came, starting with the paddle shifters. And as you notice, this paddle shifter has a little bit of a lip, and that little tiny lip will go actually on the inside of the plastic. You want to make sure that it's not hanging out. So it's kind of, I hope you can see this, but like so. Um, but the actual function of the paddle sh um, shifter itself it's just a switch, so it doesn't necessarily have to push against anything since it is um, held to the steering wheel by that torque bolt, like so. So as long as that plastic tab is in place, we can start with the screw. Again, make sure you don't over torque this. That's one. Let's go ahead and connect that one. Make sure you get that sounding click. We'll go to the other side. All right, so next we're going to start with the right hand side one again, making sure that you keep an eye on that plastic tab that it falls to the inside. Line up the hole for the Torx screw. You can get it started by finger tightening it and then finish it off by using the tool, make it a little faster. Again, just make sure you do not over tighten it. Again, looking for that click. All right, and we'll start reversing that entire process here. You have to start with the um, bottom black pieces first because they have that hidden spot um, that's going to sit underneath the other bezel. So um, easiest thing to, be, to do here is to obviously to get it to click into place first so the wiring is where it needs to be. We're going to center it over those two tabs and, of course, tighten that one first. I mentioned this earlier. You want to make sure that you don't over tighten this because it doesn't have a stopper so you can actually mess up that black plastic so it doesn't take a ton of force and right, we have that in place next is the bezel again I would go ahead and connect the uh, connector with it making sure you get that sounding click and here what I think is important to keep in mind is a couple things you want to make sure that the um, suede is neatly tucked underneath of the um, the bezel 
and more than anything you'll see that little tab that tab needs to fall behind that um, I found it pretty easy that it doesn't really matter you can install this and then move this plastic around it's pretty flexible to get it right in the spot as you can tell got everything here got all the suede underneath now these are kind of nice because they have the washers built in so we know that we can't really do to do any damage when we tighten this into place that's one and the other washer goes to the bottom And this is another one you want to be careful with because, again, it, you can easily strip it. So there we go. Now, as you can tell, I was pretty lucky with that piece falling right into place. But if you look at the back, we want to make sure that we do a better job at making sure that tabs or that it falls and it clicks into place so that we have a nice flush mount. Look at the bottom also. I'm um, just going to make sure that it looks the way it should. All right, so now we're going to start with the other side. Um, and we just got to get that clip into place there. And it can only go in one way, but obviously it makes it a little easier if you look ahead of time which direction it should go in. But for some reason I was fumbling with this one a bit ago. And this has just got to be patient to get her in there. And there we go. We can line this up. And just like the other side, um, we want to make sure that <clears throat> we go around those tabs right there but the first piece that we're putting in is the top piece that'll be hidden by the other bezel which is that guy right there uh, again be careful make sure you do not over torque this one this is the one that does not have a flat top washer or a dead tab and then also you want to make sure probably before you snap on that plastic bezel that all of the connectors are in the right sp um, spot and that they're not stuck underneath there um, which will obviously take um, a couple extra minutes for you to reverse the process to get them back out um, but now we have that piece in there next one would be to put this tab into place and then put the bezel in place this one's a little easier to get to and there we go and again same idea make sure that you hide the suede underneath that little bezel And the other piece you want to make sure that, that tab is underneath that plastic ring also just my sometimes takes a little finagling to get it in place all right so we now need to get three more of those torque screws into place here's the first one it's on a tab you cannot over tighten this one um, it's the top one that you want to be uh, worried about more than anything so once we get those two in place we just have to worry about the one on top The bottom one which is just a really much a beauty trim bezel again just make sure it covers all of the leather here at the bottom and it snaps into place you can hear that right there and at this point we're getting close to um, reinstalling this into the car but that's what the final product looks like. Again, I want to point out a couple of things. Here's a great example. See that snap not snapped into place yet. It just takes a little force and you hear that click. Just to make sure everything is nice and tight and the way it needs to be. And uh, we're at this point going back to the car and installing it into the car. All right, folks. One last thing we want to cover just to make sure we're on the same page. If you can see right above my fingernail in the center there is a little dimple or a, a, an inverted um, a nipple if you so will that seems to be an indication of how this has to be aligned if you look at the inside of the steering wheel you see the arrow that arrow should always be with that dimple and that's going to ensure that the alignment of the wheel compared to your actual wheels on the car are perfectly straight because hypothetically you could turn this and turn the wheel like so and your wheel will be incorrectly positioned compared to the wheels on the car. So that's one last thing to pay attention with. Make sure that you follow that dimple and that you line it up with the arrow on your steering wheel and you should be in good shape. 
All right, here's the reinstallation. It's actually a much quicker process um, than the, uh, I guess, removal of the steering wheel. You want to make sure that you um, get the two little tabs into the tabs of the steering wheel. We want to make sure that we fish these through this um, center hole so that they can connect to the airbag momentarily. And then carefully taking your time, just get her in place. And once the steering wheel is in place, I'll take that bolt and loosely thread it into place. All right, so we want to tighten the bolt, hand tighten, and we're going to take our little impact. Make sure that she's in place. Next piece, we have to connect the main wiring harness from the wheel to the car. And again, it will only go on one way. So again, we're looking for that click. There we go. And the next thing we have to do is put on the airbag. And we're gonna have those three connections, very straightforward. Pop that into place, push the red tab in there. And then like I mentioned earlier, we have black that goes to black and then the yellow that goes to the yellow. So again, we cannot confuse those. We push it into place and push the lock tab into place. Same thing for the yellow one. Just push it into place and then press that tab into place. And then making sure that we line up those two big plastic tabs with the spring tabs that we had to remove earlier or we had to push to remove the airbag earlier. Make sure you get them in place. And once you do, press down firmly and we're in good shape. That's all there's to it. All right, last step here is to um, reconnect the battery. So we already know where the nut is. We put it right on top of the uh, post over here, as you can tell. Make sure you don't drop it. Put the battery cable back into place. Then finger tighten it all the way down. And tighten that. Put the tabs back into place here on the back side of the battery cover. And then last thing, we'll put the push tabs in those three places and we'll be done. Hey guys, one more thing to note is that if you have the paddle shifter extensions like I do, um, they actually block the access hole. So um, if you guys are going to get the GT350 steering wheel and you already have paddle shifter extensions, you will need to remove those paddle shifter extensions before you can reach that access port and put them, uh, reinstall them back on. So for the purpose of this video, um, I already had my, my steering wheel on with the paddle shifter extension. So I just completely removed those, took the wheel off and reinstalled everything just so you guys could, uh, could get a view of how, how this actually works, how the installation process goes. So special thank you to Jason at anchorroom.com for all of his help. Uh, thank you guys for watching. And as always, thanks for your support.